So a tool that a lot of industrial engineers use, and a lot of managers use, is something known as tact time. The T at the end isn't super strong, so you don't have to say it, but tact time. So I'm going to teach you how to calculate tact time, and more importantly, why you would even want to in the first place. So tact time comes from a German word, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce. But the German word translates to meter, as in rhythm. And that's precisely what tack time is used for. Tack time is useful in high volume operations. If you're a small little fabrication shop and you only have to make four things in two weeks, you don't really care about tack time. If you're a small volume rapid prototyper and you're only making 50 parts, you don't really care about tack time because tack time is the amount of time per part. So tack time is literally your total production time divided by the parts you need to make. It's your production time because you really only care about the time it takes the operators to make the parts while they're at work. Operators are not going to be making parts while they're at home. They're not getting paid for that. So here's our scenario. Say you're at a company that wins a contract to make 500,000 armrest frames. The frames underneath your armrest in your car underneath the fabric. They have to make these 500,000 frames in one year. You only have one operator that will be working in the production cell. Your manager wants to know how long do you have to make each part? How much time should it take before a part comes out of the cell? This is tack time. It's the time per part. So in our scenario we have 2,000 hours. That's the typical hours in a work year. Not the total hours in a year, because again, the operator is not going to go home and make parts. They're not getting paid for that. Typically, there's 2,080 hours on a work year, but you're taking out 80 hours for a vacation. To be more precise, you're going to have to take out hours for holiday, hours for lunch, if that's not factored in. But just for this example, we'll stay basic. So 2,000 hours in a year, a work year, divided by 500,000 parts. This will give us 0 0.004 hours per part. This number is also known as standard hours. You'll hear it referred to that in industry as well. But let's think about this. Is this a useful way of measuring our time? Not really, because we're not really familiar with hours on such a precise level. You don't tell someone, hey, I'll be over to your house in 0 0.004 hours. We're not really sure what that means. So we need to make it more user friendly. So let's do some more basic math. So let's take those 0 .004 hours, our standard hours, and multiply them by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour. So 0 .004 hours per part is also 0.24 minutes per part. But even that's not super useful, because we don't talk about minutes like that. So multiply that by 60 again, because there's 60 seconds in a minute, and you get 14.4 seconds per part. This is a much more useful metric. Now we can say it takes 14.4 seconds to make a part, assuming we make our parts in an equal amount of time. Each one takes the same amount of time, which they should in a good operation. But you have to be careful. Should we give our production line 14.4 seconds to make a part? I would say no way. Most people would say no way. Any experienced industrial engineer is going to be scared to do that because think about it. What about mistakes happening on the line? Scrap parts. Scrap is a very common occurrence. What about off days? Days you didn't plan for. You have a snowstorm. You don't have that production time anymore. What about someone just being lazy to the point where they're not being reprimanded, but they're just being slower? assuming there's manual labor to make these parts. We do not want to just use all our time given to us. We want a little bit of a buffer in there. So to fix that, we always round our tack times down. So instead of only giving ourselves 14.4 seconds per part, we're going to round it down to 14 seconds per part. This might seem weird at first. You might think, wait, why are you giving yourself less time? Isn't that bad? Aren't you putting pressure on yourself? 
in a way you are because you're expecting your production to get a part out quicker than what you have time for. But your initial tack time calculation is assuming you're perfectly using all your time and you're not. So if you can make a part quicker in 14 seconds regularly, it gives you some extra room. After a week or two, the time adds up. You might have a couple extra hours, which is good because if you're making scrap parts or something happens to slow your production down, you do not want to be late to the customer, especially if they're a big customer and they're going to charge you for it. So now you know how to calculate tack time. It's simply time per part. Make sure you round it down and make sure you report it in a way that makes sense. Tack time is super useful in high volume industries. Good luck.